Hey, you looking to buy some cast iron? Well, you're in luck because we're doing a review on Smithy cast iron. We're going to talk about its design, its performance, and can it stand the heat. So stick around. You're going to enjoy this one. Hey, thank you all for stopping by. My name is Kent Rollins, and welcome to our channel. We do a lot of outdoor cooking, grilling. We cook in cast iron Dutch ovens. But we are really blessed today, folks. I am here with the most beautiful woman in the world, the greatest producer ever. Let's give her a round of applause for Shannon, the greatest producer on YouTube ever. Nice. Settle down, settle down. <laughs> Everybody get, please stay seated. <laughs> we um, previously did um, kind of a series on different cast iron reviews for yep. different companies, but we got a lot of questions from folks asking about Smithy cast iron. Smithy contacted us and said, hey, we want to send you a skillet um, and we'd like just an honest review like we've done before. So we appreciate Smithy yes, wanting to be involved in this. Yes, we do very much. Thank you all. If you are interested in any of those other reviews, I'll link that below. Oh, I also want to mention, if you guys stick around to the end of this, we're also going to just do a little recap on some of the other companies and as we've been cooking in their skillets, what we think. That's a little bonus at the end. So without further ado, let's get right into it, don't you? Okay. This is their 10 inch, right? Yep. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nice. Okay. Hey, let's read this. What's it say? We have built your smithy to become an heirloom. Use it frequently. Rekindle the lost traditions of cast iron. Let it play a small part in setting the table for warm meals and pleasant memories with friends and family. Pass it on wisely. I like that. That is a great they deal. Get it. What do we have in here? Whoa. All this fun stuff. Looky here, we have one of them. I'm not going to burn your hand protectors. Oh, Ooh, chain like scrubber. A, like a chain mail yeah, scrubber. Which, you know, on, I've not used one of these, so that's good. What do we got? Oh, we got one more thing. We got more goodies in here. Ah, a Looky spat here. As Kent says, it's a spatula. It's a spatula, but it's really good for dipping in here and frying stuff out of there. Just get in there and get that grease. So I do like the packaging because it's in there securely. Yep. It's not going to like shuffle around. Ooh. Well, then here's one thing I noticed right off the bat it's heavy. Heavy? It is heavy. Well, in fact, it weighed five pounds and 10 ounces. Which does clock in as our heaviest skillet that we have reviewed. But um, you did kind of look into that and- Yeah, the reason they have a heavier skillet with a thicker wall is heat retention. Yep. You can get this skillet hot on a medium heat and sear a steak and let it hold that heat. That is one thing about the thicker walls in this. It's much thicker than some of the other ones. Um, so, it, and I think, it, and it's deeper too. Would you say this was? Two inches deep. Two inches deep. So what is the nine, nine inch. It's a 10 inch skillet, but nine inches cooking space. Gotcha. I'm a big, big person on handles, especially with my smaller hand. The handle does actually feel good. Yeah. Um, and it helps, it does help offset some of that weight, I feel like. Sure, I can tell it weighs more, but when you get a hold of it, it's it's pretty well even. You sort of it does, it. yeah. It, it's it's balanced well. Let me talk about something that's really important to me in cast iron skillets. Okay, okay? go for it. That is pour spouts. What do I make a lot of times? Gravy, and I love to be able to just take it and pour it right there on it. Pour spouts both sides. It that didn't take away from the thickness of the wall any. They just beveled this out here. It's got the Smithy Ironware, USA Made, and they're Charleston, in Charleston, South, South Carolina. South Carolina. And they do have a heat ring, just like some of the old fashioned stuff does. So many years ago, heat rings were put on old skillets because you were cooking directly on a heat source, like an old cast iron wood stove, and you were sitting right down there on it. Now with that heat ring, it's gonna give you a little buffer, a little air space to let that be able to not get so hot. I love a skillet with a heat ring. Do you? To, to me, it makes a great big difference because when you cook, and we're a lot of times on old Bertha, and y'all have seen old Bertha, she's just flat it's a high lady. and hot. So that does give you a little bit of, of a buffer there. Now, does this matter? Does the heat ring matter? Like if they're cooking on a electric or glass top or anything? No. No, it doesn't. And one other thing I really like about this, because yeah. a lot of skillets got it, but it's a beveled handle, sort of rolls down. 
some of the other handles are a slot solid cut yeah this one and i didn't even realize that until you said it that's why it feels better in my hand it rolls here yeah and around you can hang this here yep but also look at these holes they put on the other side is you can hang it here nice. too also but it still gives you and that's you a great way to store your oh, yeah. skillet to hang it See. now this is a pre-seasoned yes pre-seasoned okay, so. satin finished when you take your hand across there as they would say in my part of the country, that's smoother than a baby's butt. See the the you polish. Can, you can see the polish in the rings, yeah. but it's not beveled in huh. there. Like that's just a visual deal. I would go to town with this one right here and just go ahead and cook breakfast. You know what I mean? What's our cost on this skillet? This is hundred and sixty dollars. Okay. And um, so and in, this is on this is on the higher end. It's not the highest price skillet, but it's definitely on the higher end. Yeah. You know, it, it depends on what you're after, but a lot of you I know are already going to say, well, that's too high. But you have to remember what we started out right at the first saying. This will outlast you. It's sad, but it's true. It'll be here when you're gone if you take care of it. You can hand this down from one generation to the next. Can you buy something else for $160 and do that? I don't think so. Oh, let me measure the handle. So, from the tip. Five inches. Five the thing I like about it, there's two. I do like the weight because do I know, yes, the weight is going to mean it's going to hold heat. It makes you feel confident yeah. in it. But also the smooth finish. Yeah. I love me some pour spouts. Right. I like it. Now, if I changed it just a little, I'd lengthen the handle just a tad for my big old hands because I'm up here. You know. Yeah, like you show that that. Yeah, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm way up here when I grab a hold. It takes a little leverage away from me when That's I have to grab it out there. This thing would do a great job searing in the oven anywhere in the world, but from the oven, from the skillet to the table, that thing is going to hold you some heat. Yeah. But I would like to get it on some heat and see what happens. Okay. So well, folks, it's morning. The rooster crowed and the beagle and Shan are ready for their breakfast. We brought this old smithy in the house. Let's get it warmed up and start cooking something. In here, there is no seasoning. There is nothing just like it came to me. So we're going to lay some bacon in there because bacon is notoriously known to stick. We'll see if it turns loose in a minute. That is the first sign that I'm looking for is it'll slide in that skillet. Well, let's see what's happening. There is no sticking whatsoever, which is a good sign. And that hog meat is looking good. Well, it is done, folks. There is no sticking nowhere. Take this right here, wood against metal, never metal against metal. Sometimes when you cook bacon, you know it can really leave a residue and stick, but that thing cleans up so easy and so slick, let me wipe this out. Test number one is done. They passed. Let's see if we can scramble the egg in there and get it all out. I will tell you, as thick walled as it is, it takes a little longer to heat than maybe some of the thin walled stuff, but it does hold that heat really well. I'm thinking we could have just turned that plum off and scrambled them eggs with residual heat. Cackle berries. There ain't no oil in here. There ain't nothing. I wiped that bacon grease out, so Ooh, that is a pretty sound it is. The reason I like to start out with a scrambled egg in a new skillet or something like that is if you ever had a skillet that sticks and you scramble eggs, you, use, you lose half your eggs before you ever get them out of there because it just sticks to everything here. And look how that thing is turning loose really good. Let's chop it up. Well, this whole thing is pretty hot. I should have let it cool off a little and it probably wouldn't have hurt if I'd have put just a tad bit of oil in there or left some of that bacon grease. But you can see most of it's turning loose here. I ain't losing a whole lot of egg. And that is a plus. Passed the test on both occasions it did. Now I'm going to clean this up here in just a second and we're going to do something we've never done. We're going to heat two skillets and we're going to do a little heat retention test and see what lasts the longest. I have an old Griswold skillet that's been in the family a long time and we got that smithy. I want you to see the difference in the thickness of the walls. You can see this one is a lot thicker than this old Griswold. I want to see what it does after you heat it so long. How fast does it cool off? Let's check the temperature first on this one right here with our calibrated what you call it gun. We are at 86.7 degrees. 
We're going to let this heat for three minutes. So what do we do? Start, start the watch. We'll check it at three minutes when we turn it off to see actually how hot it is. Center and side walls. And then we're going to let it cool to a minute, three minutes, and five minutes. And then run the same test on the smithy because I want to see what them thicker walls do for heat retention. So let's look at the timing and the temperatures on this little test that we did. I'm, I'm going to shoot up this infographic. So we, we started both skillets at about 86 degrees. Uh, yeah. The Griswold started um, after the three minute heat, it got to 401 degrees. The Smithy, however, after three minutes only got to 242. Not surprising since it yeah. has that thick, thick heat. wall. Yeah. So it's going to take longer for that thicker cast iron to heat up. But what we did find interesting is after we turned it off and we checked the heat after one minute, uh, Griswold hit 365, which was down 36 degrees. However, the Smithy went to 261. It bumped up 19 degrees. Um, after three minutes, the um, Griswold went down 74 degrees. Um, Smithy was only down 39 degrees. And finally, after we let it set for five minutes, the Griswold hit 229, that was down 62 degrees, and Smithy only went down 27 degrees. That thick wall is that way for a purpose. That's what they designed it for. It'll be a great skillet to sear a piece of meat. Oh my gosh, that thing will hold some heat. Knowing all of this, is there a specific type of person or cooker that you would suggest this particular skillet to? First of all, I'd, I'd, I would suggest this if you're a camper, an outdoorsman, mm. and you're cooking over a fire, this thing is gonna serve you well because it's gonna stand up. The durability is gonna be forever, but also it's gonna hold that heat. But if you're a person who really likes to sear a piece of meat, maybe in a skillet and finish it in an oven, this is your fellow. Sure, you can do that with any cast iron. You have to remember you're gonna to have to let this heat a little longer to get it to that temperature before you stick it in that oven. Is this a type of skillet that you wouldn't recommend to a certain type of cooker? Well. If somebody thinks iron is heavy, already to begin with, yeah, this, this is be. Yeah. this is probably going to be a little heavy. Overall, it performed great to me. I really love the finish that it the had on it when it came. Definitely. Smithy, hey, I'll cook in y'all skillet. I promise you that. Just make sure you get you a good piece of cast iron. Make sure you use it. Make sure you take care of it. A lot of folks are going to tell you you don't need to reseason after every trip. I do. That's why my stuff has a good glossy black finish, and it's always like slick as a bug's butt. Any of the information we talked about or products we use will definitely link below as well as more information on Smithy. So check those links out below. We uh, thank the Smithy folks so much. I, I really like your iron, I do. I, I thank all these companies that are making quality made cast iron in the United States of America because that's the only place we're gonna get it. And we appreciate y'all for doing that. God bless you each and every one. Hit that subscribe button. See you down the trail, folks. So folks, this is the bonus that we've been promising you. Yes, it is. We get a lot of questions on how is that iron holding up that y'all had, the field, the butter pad, the stargazer. Well, folks, I'm telling you, it is held up very well. They have all accepted seasoning really well. The field, I think, better than anybody. The seasoning's just building and holding a little better? Yeah, it's more uniform. It's okay. uh, it, it's never gonna happen all at once. Um, we get a lot of questions like, my, my seasoning is splotchy, it's kind of rubbing off. That's okay, that's gonna build in. Um, we have noticed the Stargazer builds um, seasoning a little more splotchy. Field is a little more even. Butter pad is kind of in the middle. Yeah, they, they all work well. Yeah. Now this, like, you know, this one with the handle, the Stargazer, I tend to use a little more maybe in the oven, like bacon, cornbread, stuff like that, just because that? it's easier to grab a hold of in there and pull out. Oh. You know, it's got that longer handle. I have noticed too, um, this longer handle, as we've mentioned, does make a difference. Depending on what you're cooking, I've, I've used this and I don't need to use a pot holder. Um, Obviously, the longer, if it's something you're cooking for a long time, yeah. it will get hot, but that is a big difference. Yes, there. it is. And it's and, it, and it's really got a lot of good leverage here to yes. it with that. You know, that bevel edge But you edge like a pour it, spout. Oh, so, I do so love a do pour spout. So what do you feel about that? Well, it still pours pretty good, but it always wants to drip down the edge a little too after it's over. Okay. Now, Butter Pat got one on both ends. Yep. They have Field rolled that. They have rolled theirs a little. It still pours pretty good, but it gets here. Any of them? There's a difference in price range, as we've said, you know. So it's uh, kind of at this point when you get a quality U.S. made skillet, 
at that point, it's just kind of personal preference. Yeah. You know, yeah. like what, what kind of style designs do you like? What are you going to be cooking a lot in? Like we said with Smithy, it's yeah. going to be more meat and searing. That would be great. I'd say the field is just an all-around all go-to skillet. The stargazer would be, um, if you like a longer handle, you want some of that, that heat to dissipate before getting your handle. Um, I, camping, yeah. like on the open fire, this would be a great skillet. Butter pat, this is just like a classic, I would say on the higher end skillet, if you are a cast iron aficionado, this Whoa. would be a great skillet for Big you. Big word, Shan. So, Big hey. word. Yep. Quality craftsmanship by people who have put their heart and soul in it. And that's what it's about, folks. Support American products, buy American products, and when you buy these, you know they're going to be good. Right.